So you need a brochure, you don't have InDesign, but you have Photoshop. And while Photoshop isn't the first program to come to mind when designing brochures, in a pinch it can absolutely do the job. Especially thanks to sites like Envato Elements where you get unlimited downloads of graphics, photos, and fonts, all with super simple commercial licensing. Plus a no locking contract means you can cancel anytime. Go ahead and subscribe now with the link down in the description. So we're going to jump right into it. Uh, first, starting with our uh, guides. We have to set up our document and make sure everything is ready for printing. Uh, let's look at the specifics here. One of the most common trifold brochure sizes is 11 by 8.5 inches. And we're going to go with exactly 11.93 by 8.503 inches uh, to be <laughs> exact today. I had to make a brochure once and that ended up being the size so I'm going to roll with it today as well. Sizes, of course, can and will vary. You'll also want to set the resolution to 300 to ensure a nice and crisp, clear printing experience. Fun fact, resolution only matters when printing. It has absolutely no bearing on what a web image would look like. But let's finally set up those guides, which will help us know where to kind of place what. Our first set of guides will be our bleed guide and our fold guides, and these will show us where the trifold brochure will be folded once printed. Let's go ahead and turn on the ruler by hitting Ctrl R and then right click millimeters. We can click and drag on the ruler to create a guide, or we can go up to View, Guides, New Guide, and input an exact location, and that's what I'm going to do. So to start, we have four vertical guides. One at three millimeters. One at 102 millimeters. One at 201 millimeters. And then we're going to put one at the 300 millimeter mark. And this should give us three 99 millimeter columns. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, next, let's place two horizontal guides at both three and the 213 millimeter marks. And so here we have our fold guides uh, telling us where that brochure is gonna fold. And we'll want to keep anything we don't want to be folded out of that area. And then we have our bleed guide. And this guide will give the printing process a little bit of wiggle room. Anything past these guides might get cut off or clipped. So we want to make sure any graphic or element we don't want to be cut off stays well within these guides. But we have one more set of guides to go, and this is going to be our content areas. This is where we'll want any really important information to stay within. Text, logos, infographics, things like that. Uh, first, let's place some vertical guides at the 11 millimeter mark. Then 94. One hundred and ten. One hundred and ninety three. Two hundred and nine. And then two hundred and ninety two. And these are our vertical content guides. And then we can go ahead and finish off those guides by placing two horizontal guides at the 11 millimeter mark. And the 205 millimeter mark. This essentially gives us three smaller panels inside of those original uh, panels here. So again, all critical information should stay well within these guides or they do risk being either folded or even cut off. If you're making a trifold brochure with both an outer side and an inside, which you most likely are, uh, go ahead and save two versions of the same document just to save yourself some time. No need to uh, redo these guides if you don't need to. With our document prepped, let's lay down our uh, backgrounds. First, laying down a, a pattern. And I'll be using this pattern uh, from this pattern pack. 
and I'm going to bring the opacity of that down to 10% or so. When in doubt, keep things subtle, and a great way of doing that is by lowering the opacity. Next, let's create a rectangle towards the top of the canvas, and we're bringing that across the full length of our brochure. We're basically splitting the outer side into two sections, a top and a smaller bottom, or footer area. So the color for this doesn't matter because I'm actually going to clip a photo of a blackboard or chalkboard into the shape. But any kind of subtle texture is going to look great here. Anything that offers some contrast to our pattern will work perfectly fine. Now let's change to the inside document and place that same chalkboard texture of filling up the entire canvas. And we're going to split this side into two as well, only vertically. So I'm going to go with a light gray rectangle, taking up that whole right hand panel. Now switching back to the outer side document, we can add a bit more flair by clipping an image right into that chalkboard texture. Maybe your office or even just an environmental shot. Whatever fits your brochure, of course. But since this is just a design element, I'm also going to set the layer mode to overlay to blend it into that bottom layer. And I'm going to add a reasonably harsh filter blur Gaussian blur. You could also just opt for a plain texture. Um, I'm keeping things kind of simple and grayscale to avoid clashing colors and patterns. These are just design elements. Feel free to adapt, adopt, or omit them completely. Uh, so now let's focus on each side of this brochure separately so we don't have to keep switching back and forth. First, we want to know what information is going where. So let's imagine this is our brochure laying flat on a table, like a face down book. This rightmost panel is actually the front of our brochure when all folded up. So this is a great place to put a company logo, iconic imagery, or maybe a spokesperson. Or if the brochure is less promotional and more informational, then this is where you'll want to add uh, the title of the brochure. Uh, think of this as the front cover, something big, simple, and easy to identify. I'm going to go with a logo and a person. I'll also be using the same pink and orange gradient combo that I'm going to add to this person uh, to add pops of color throughout the brochure. You absolutely do not need to use the same gradient and grayscale design elements I'm using. I would recommend trying to stick to a simplified color palette, two to three complementary colors, um, tops. You can find tons of inspiration over on Envato Elements if you are strapped for ideas. We'll be adding in some larger bold text in the other panels, so feel free to use that type of formatting for your cover if you want it to be more text-based. But for me, I'm going to try and keep things as minimal as possible so it's easy to switch out the design elements. I'm mostly going to be focusing on the guides, uh, the type tool, along with the auto align tools within Photoshop. So I am all done, but if this is our cover, then the middle panel here is actually the back side of our document or brochure, like the spine of a book. I'm going to place a row of logos in this upper section, uh, maybe sponsors or something like that. You'll want to prioritize your information, of course. But I'm going to place some logos so we can take a closer look at those auto-align tools I mentioned earlier. We can find them by selecting the Move tool and looking at the upper options bar. And they're going to appear grayed out unless we select multiple layers. And we can do that by clicking a layer, holding shift, and then clicking another layer. And then that will auto select every layer in between those two layers. Or we can select multiple layers individually by holding control slash command and clicking all the layers we want to align. And now our auto align tools are available to us. The icons indicate how the layers will be aligned. If we want these logos to be aligned via their center, then we'll select Center Align. You're always better off using the auto-align tools rather than trying to eyeball things, even if you have things like Snap or Guides enabled. 
it's just really easy to miss a pixel. Uh, but we can use auto align on any type of layer anytime. I'm going to create a rectangle shape, uh, maybe make it the same length as the content panel here. And I'm going to fill it with a gradient using a gradient overlay layer effect. I'm also going to throw a little graphic in here just to add some flair to the brochure. And this will be a good spot for a phone number, so let's grab the type tool. And in a big bold font, let's type out a fake number, uh, placing that over the rectangle. So we have a bunch of different layers here. Uh, let's align the rectangle and the text using both the vertical and horizontal center align. Boom, boom. And this will place our font square in the middle of that rectangle, so we know it's exactly in the middle here. Uh, no guessing. And now let's select all those logos, the graphic, uh, the type layer, and the rectangle shape, and then we can vertically center align them all. And if we need to, we can scooch all the layers back into the content guides if they shifted. But now we know that all of these layers are perfectly vertically centered. Now that we know how to align layers, uh, let's talk more about the type tool and fonts. Just like your colors, you probably want to keep things simple with fonts. That's what I recommend. I never recommend using more than two. And in fact, in this brochure, I'll only be using one because this font has a wide variety of font weights seen here. From extra thin to extra bold, this gives us visual variety without having to worry about five different fonts clashing with each other. Our important stuff can be heavy and bold, while the longer information or the less important information can be smaller and still fit the visual language. So when choosing a font, try and opt for fonts that have a wider range of font weights as opposed to giving everything a unique typeface. Let's go ahead and type in some fake, in my case, contact information to fill up the area below the number here. Since it's not on a solid background, I want it to be black, as in the weight, and a darker gray color. We always want to keep readability in mind. Uh, so here's my uh, dummy info all done. Let's talk about text settings. Now I have them in my panels here, but if you don't already, you'll likely want to open window paragraph and window character. This is where our font options are going to live. So first let's go into the uh, paragraph panel and make sure the text is being set to a uh, centered. And then if we look in character, uh, we can do a ton of things here. We can change its weight if we wanted to. We also have letter spacing, which can be very useful. But for now, I actually just want to change the line height. So the spacing between the different lines of text. I'm going to set this to around 80 since this is individual lines of information and not a body of text. Now, I do want to mention that for text that is just one line, like our phone number here, you do want to align the text according to how it's positioned. This phone number is centered inside of this rectangle, so we want to make sure in paragraph it is set to center. That way, if we want to change the number of text, it'll remain centered inside of that rectangle. And now let's put what we've learned about the align and text tools to a good use uh, in this left panel here. Let's create some big title text, but we'll align it to the left this time using the paragraph panel. And I'm going to use two different font weights here to add some visual interest without having to choose a different fonts. I'm splitting each line of text onto their own layer, and I'll explain that here in a moment. So I split that text because I want to add that same pink and orange gradient to the heavier font. And I'm actually going to copy it right from the rectangle by holding Alt, clicking, and then dragging it onto the top text. And that's how to copy a layer style right from one layer onto another. Right below this a title, let's add some smaller text. We'll keep it in the regular font weight and make it a larger body of text. Now this is obviously just filler text, but 
I do recommend trying to keep your information as concise as you can uh, so there aren't walls of hard to read small text on your brochure. The more information you add, the smaller that text is going to have to be. I'd keep things short and sweet when you can. This is looking good, so let's go into that paragraph panel. Um, this text is left aligned, which is perfect, but I also want to point out and recommend turning off hyphenate. Uh, this is what tells Photoshop whether or not you want to split longer words into hyphenated words. You might want that, but if you don't, this is where to turn it off. I'm personally not a fan. So in this bottom portion, I'm going to add a little text box and a graphic. Again, copying that pink and orange gradient to the shape. Keeping this shape well within or exactly up against our content lines. Looking good, so I'm going to finish everything off by vertically centering the graphic shape and text. So we know all this is aligned. And then we can go ahead and left align the body text and the two title text to make sure everything is a nice and scooched to the left right up on that content line. And let's move on to the inside of the brochure. We'll be using the same fonts, layer styles, and icons for this inside as we did the outermost side. So first, I'm going to add in some information to the right side panel. I'm just going to place all the parts and dummy text in really quick because for this section, I actually want to focus on groups. And here we are. So you might have noticed I've been pretty good about naming and grouping my different elements so far. Could be better, but could be worse. It's a good habit to get into so you can easily find and edit this information in the future. However, there's also another reason to do it. Just like you can align layers, you can align groups. Here we have a few icons and next to each icon a bit of text. The text is one text box with the first line set to a larger font and a nice bold color. So the first line of text is actually a title, but it's all within the same text layer. But still we have two layers, the icon and the text layer. I want the icon to be horizontally aligned with that text box. So I'll select both layers and click the horizontal align icon. Easy. But if I want to align all of these different elements as individual sections and pairs, um, we of course can't. Not until I group each layer pair into their own group. The shortcut for creating a group is Control G. Now if I select our four groups, I can left align all of them. And I can even give them an even horizontal spacing. This means we can make sure each icon is aligned with its text by selecting the individual layers within the group. and that each section is then aligned with each other by selecting the actual groups. Finally, I'm going to combine the middle and left panels to create one large panel. Remember, this is the inside of our brochure, so this will be like opening to one large page. I'm going to create a big pink and orange gradient rectangle towards the bottom middle here, just to add some separation, stretching from the brochure edge to the gray box. And this might be a good area to add statistics and numbers or facts. Something short but important. It's featured right in the middle here. Uh, for the text, however, we still do want to keep it out of the fold lines. Now, since this is inside of the brochure and will most likely be seen only while completely open, it's less of a big deal if text does fall on those lines. Uh, but I still recommend keeping most informational text out of those folds. But things like really large text, graphics, and photos are going to be fine most of the time. So I am going to add some big statement text along with some graphics just to fill up the empty space here.
And this just leaves us with our footer. Uh, we can fill the bottom half of the brochure with maybe a short about us section with a pink header. Maybe do this in all caps for some visual variation, kind of similar to our surface section, kind of bringing in different design elements so everything ties together. But to finish things off, in the middle bottom panel here, within the content lines, I'm going to add a list of dummy text. It could be a list of any number of things, just a list of something. Because now we're going to create a pink to orange gradient checkmark to pair with each item on that list. So here we had two options. You could add each item onto its own line of text, and that would make aligning the check marks with the list item much easier. Or you could do what I did, which is to type everything out in one large text box, which is quicker. But while it's quicker, you can run into some major issues with having to realign the check marks over and over again if you do end up changing the font or the text in the future, or if any of these items end up needing to be two lines instead of just one. The way I'm doing it here is less future-proof. Uh, so fair warning when you're choosing how to format your text, uh, think to yourself, am I going to edit this in the future or is this going to be a template? And that's how to make a trifold brochure in Photoshop. If hot pink isn't your vibe, go ahead and change out those gradients. I wanted to make sure the design was really just easy to change into whatever you needed it to be. The guides, align tools, and the general tip of keeping your fonts and colors nice and minimal but impactful are the real takeaways here. But that's going to do it for today. If that wasn't enough and you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other videos that Envato Tuts Plus has to offer? If you liked this video, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos, including tips, tricks, and tutorials. Happy designing. See you next time.